And it's another Sunday adventure time. I'm at the Nigel Pass parking lot here with uh, Snow White to St. Louis, leaving her behind for a couple of nights, and we are heading into the White Goat Wilderness via Nigel Pass. So, heading up to Nigel Pass, about 7K. Uh, late start after work, it's about 3.30, 4 o'clock-ish. Uh, then I'm gonna turn right after Nigel, cross the Brazo, and head up to uh, towards Cataract Pass. Uh, I'm not sure where I'm camping tonight. I'm just hitting this uh, this area random. I've been here before, so I'm gonna head into, uh, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I might end up in Cataract Pass, or keep on going over to Klein Pass tomorrow and camp there at a couple of little lakes. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Onward. About to hit the trail true here. Uh, it's the old like warden cabin there. Probably like the staging area for the Brazo area. So, uh, off to uh, Nigel Pass. But I won't be going down the Brazo River, I'll be going up to the headwaters. So, the first part of that trail is about two kilometer road. The trail used to run on the other side of the creek there, but a uh, bridge got taken out, so now you gotta walk that road. And it was actually pretty quick today. This is my fifth time into the pass, into Cataract Pass, but uh, I've been through Nigel Pass many times. All right, I'll keep going here. So, uh, I don't know, a few K in now, 3K or so. Uh, I just climbed a little hill to, you know, work out the lungs a bit. And now into this willow meadow here. Yeah, the views get pretty good. And I'm heading up that way, Nigel Pass. Clouds are kind of rolling in. I'm expecting rain and showers and God only knows what. It's been typical weather, so prepared. But I'll take the uh, little bit of blue sky and the nice views right now for sure. Alright, so just crossing the last meadow. Uh, you can see the cloud there, the gray sky is behind me. I thought it was gonna start raining, so just put the pack cover on and stuff, but I don't know. It's looking pretty good over there. I don't know, some blue sky. So, yeah, just passing this meadow. Uh, about a, maybe a click from the uh, Nigel Pass, the height of land of it, and then I'll just drop into the Brazo and head south towards Cataract Pass. So another good hill coming up.
one pass down Ida Land. Mm, bitch of a hill. So I'm heading over that way, where the clouds are. And I just came up from there. That's the Icefields Parkway down there, Mount Saskatchewan, way in the distance. And we are heading into the Brazo headwaters. Keeps me coming back here. Look at that view. This is one of my favorite places in all the Rockies. I know you'll probably hear me say that quite often, but this one really is. I mean, how can it not be? Look at that. And we're off the main trail. There might be a few people up here in this area, but not like the other way on the Brazo Loop. Every campground's probably full there. rock slide. You can see where it came down between those two cliffs and then just piled up down here and that's like total contrast to these orange and gray limestone. It's a very very cool area. Let's go check it out. That's uh, Cataract Pass there, the low point. Beauty. Right now I'm uh, just navigating my way through that boulder field. Let's see, there's a. Uh, you can still see a trail there and there's some cairns along the way too but it's just like so surreal in here.
open. slide Closer. Such a cool trail. getting up there. Uh, I'm not far from the headwaters of the Brazo and the base of uh, Cataract Pass here. It's about uh, it's 20 after 7 so it's getting a little late so I think what I'm gonna do is there's a lake at the sorry it's going through the boulders here at the headwaters of the Brazo and uh, I think I'm just gonna camp there tonight. Quick camp, it's a nice spot. And then uh, up and over tomorrow morning into, I think I'll go to Klein Pass and camp there for a night. It's a really nice uh, area and there's a couple lakes there too. So I think that's the plan. Yeah. So let's go to the lake. This is home for the night. Windy, chilly spot of tree line. And put me here. Lake, which is still frozen mostly. bear barrel for uh, storing my food in uh, above the tree line where there's no trees to hang your food so um, I bit the bullet and I had to get one of these because I do a lot of camping in, in the Alpine so it's uh, grizzly bear proof apparently there's no edges on it at all so all my food and everything is put in there and then you just uh, close it up and then there's these two little locks which you can use a 
pretty much anything really, like a tent peg or anything will, anything to get in there and just turn it to lock it. Let's see lock there. And yeah, there's no no edges for the bear to catch his claws on. And it's solid as fuck. Um, it weighs about a kilogram, so it's bulky and it's heavy. Uh, fits about 20 liters, I think. Uh, I've packed 11 days in there of food. Um, pretty sure if I packed it right and all dehydrated and everything, I could probably get two weeks food in there for a two week trip. Uh, but for me in the uh, camping in the Alpine, it's complete peace of mind. It's just always from my camp over there. And then uh, I just, you know, put it somewhere down here and yeah. They can, uh, they can try, but they ain't getting it. Only thing you, they might do is roll it off a mountainside, which I've worried about. But up here, I'm flat here, so I don't have to worry about it. But I have been in places that, yeah, you gotta be careful that way. Peace of mind, safety for me, safety for bears, and uh, we can all coexist together. And, It's about uh, 10.30, I guess. So we're just chilling out in the tent here. Long day. Winds are picking up, a bit of a storm maybe coming. But uh, I'm pretty cozy in here for tonight. And uh, yeah, we'll get up and have another adventure tomorrow. Good morning. It's about... Uh, 7 a.m. just before. Got a good sleep. It was actually pretty pretty cozy last night. Despite the, the wind and no rain really. Storm. It's cloudy a bit, but uh, didn't storm or rain or snow or anything, so that's good. So I'm just having a wake and bake coffee. And then uh, we slowly pack up not too far to go today up over the pass and then another know, three kilometers to climb pass just wandering through meadows pretty much so it's easy going and then uh, you know I'll set up camp there for, for the night and see uh, see what the day brings all right so it's just after eight and uh, all packed up on the move and the words Cataract Pass which is that steep hill behind me and yeah it's a beast of a path up there it's pretty steep so and then it's a bit of a longer descent down the other side in White Goat so I'm just gonna head up there now get that done and over with and then into uh, the meadows of Cataract and I just hope those blue skies behind me come this way instead of that stuff. All right, I stay so far.
getting up there. Just climbing the big hill here. Slow and steady wins the race. That's all. One foot in front of the other. Every step up. Straighten your leg. Lock that knee. Use your poles. Woo. Steep. Beauty. Almost there. Leaving the Brazo headwaters and Jasper behind. And now we're heading into the White Goat Wilderness. It's like a park, but better. There's uh, no hunting, no fishing, no biking, no fires. Uh, the only, basically the only thing you can do in this wilderness zone is uh, hiking and camping. There's no registration, there's no campgrounds, it's all random. The trails are unmaintained. So it's about as wild and free as you can get for a backpacker heading into this zone. And another reason why I come here because all the backcountry trails and the parks are filled up pretty much. And I can do whatever the heck I want in here as far as camping goes. So here we are. White Goat Wilderness, Jasper Park Boundary, heading down there, that's Cataract Creek, this is the backside of like Cirrus Mountain, where the Weeping Wall would be on the parkway, and uh, that's where I came up from, yeah, weather's not too bad, neither was the pass, the hill was alright, Slow and steady. All right, see your camp. So this is the headwaters of Cataract Creek and Cataract Valley. Down that way, flows into the Klein River, about uh, just a few k downstream of Pinto Lake. I'm gonna drop down there across the creek up in these meadows and then between these two mountains up in there is Klein Pass and that's my destination today. Pretty sweet. Well, <clears throat> not a bad view. Lakefront property at Klein Lakes and Klein Pass. I don't know, I guess they're all called Klein Lakes. So this is Klein Pass. And I just got everything set up. And a little bit of rain's coming in, so perfect timing. Again, just having a coffee, bowl. Got some soup rehydrating. Roasted red pepper and potato, homemade. I'm just gonna chill here for the day. That's the old homestead tonight. Bad spot. It's going past that pile of rocks over there. I got a marmot for a neighbor. Last time I was here, I don't know if it's the same fella, but tried to steal my sleeping bag. He already came over for a visit, but I don't know where he went. He's pretty cool. So, if you can see back in there, there's that mountain and then that ridge just above my head there. That's, uh, if you go up and over that, it'll drop down to a place called Valley of the Lakes. Uh, another amazing, amazing area. Bit of a climb to get over that uh, mountain shoulder there, but uh, yeah, Valley of the Lakes is. Uh, an alpine basin, rocky alpine basin that 
has about 20 lakes, 20 tarns in it. I'll probably head back there at some point this summer if I get the time, because it's amazing. But it takes, you know, you want a four day trip for that. Just so you have a full day in, in the Valley of the Lakes. Today is just R and R right here. This is what I'm doing today. A bunch of chilling out. Have some coffee. Have some lunch. Maybe have a nap. A little bit of fireball after. And dinner and all that jazz. Looks like my neighbor is returning. This is my marmot friend. I think he's coming to visit again. Good neighbor to have. Early warning system for bears. So we'll see if he comes over here. And we'll uh, have a little chat. Oh, here he comes. Can't steal my sleeping bag this time. Curious fella. What up? What's up, buddy? Back to his house. Down there. That must be his house there. Thanks for the visit, neighbor. We got two now. This guy was like right up to me just a second ago. Well, I couldn't have asked for a better afternoon here. There's clouds like around, but I've been in a pocket of sunshine pretty much all day. I had a nap for about an hour and a half, and well, there's a marmot still there. There was three around at one point. They just been munching on something over there, so I've been hanging out with them all day. Yeah, just enough of a breeze to keep things cool. Not a single mosquito, not one. No bugs. Ground's dry. That's why I camp in the Alpine. I love it up here. It's just this like feeling of freedom, just wide open spaces. 
in endless wandering meadows, wildflowers, lakes, glaciers. I mean, it's got it all, right? And now I just get to chill up here with the marmots. Like this guy. And this guy. Guy or girl, I don't know. There was three at one point. Or these two have been here for a couple hours now. What's up, buddy? Well, some good eating around here, I guess. A wolverine. Look at that. The marmots just told me he was here. He's staring me down. running away. This is the first wolverine I've ever seen. Awesome. Good job, marmots. That was awesome. A wolverine. I can still see him. He's running up the hill. Uh, he'll run a few feet and then he'll stop and he'll look at me and he's just bolting up that hill man he's covered that in no time the marmots are going crazy that was fucking cool <laughs> that's the first wolverine I've ever seen I thought it was another marmot at first alright wow yep Wolverine. Okay, so basically he just ran like from that snow patch all the way up that gully up the hill. He's crossed that snow patch. He ran up that little cliff band like right there. And now he's gone up and over that hill like that. Wow. Well, he must be gone because the marmots are all quiet now. I swear those guys knew he was coming long before he came through the pass. They were making some weird noise earlier, calling out to each other, and then they just all started whistling. And then I saw him there. So, I wonder where he's gone now. Did he go over the hill, and then behind that hill, and down and back through the pass? Or is he just going to say screw it and go up and over that mountainside into uh, the Valley of the Lakes? And then maybe keep going down that way. That's the Brazo River way down there. So who knows? Maybe he's heading that way and he'll just keep finding another way to go. Because that's what Wolverines do. Wow. That was pretty cool. I wonder if he'd be able to get in the bear barrel. It's bear proof, but is it Wolverine proof? That's why I'm glad he ran up the hill. I don't want him anywhere near here. That's for sure. Let's stand his ground for a second there. Does, does bear spray work against the wolverine? I don't know. Awesome. Well, it's just after eight. I'm uh, pretty much settled in for the night. I'll get an early, early sleep and up early tomorrow. And uh, yeah, a bit of a hike out, so leave here and hike all the way out over Cataract Pass and then down and over Nigel and out. It's been a good day. The weather was great. It held out. It was sunny. I just chilled and lounged, hung out with the marmots, saw Wolverine. Yeah, another good visit to this lake. morning uh, it's just around seven at Ray last night a bit of a Ray storm a little chilly but not too bad uh, just gonna slowly wake up 
the coffee pack up and might be a bit of a bit of a wet hike out today. We'll see. Uh, quarter to ten. Just packed up my breakfast and I'm on my way back down into Cataract and then up and over Cataract Pass and down the Brazo to Nigel Pass, Nigel Creek and home. It was a good trip and a Wolverine. A little chilly last night but pretty stay pretty comfy regardless. Good sleep all in all so far. One more hike out through a beautiful area. Peace. in the headwaters meadows of Cataract Creek. It's such a beautiful area and up towards Cataract Pass. Such an awesome place. First time I came through here was uh, a long time ago, back in 04. And me and some buddies from Banff and a dog Hiked from Moline Lake to Banff over 28 days, I guess. And, uh, yeah, I remember. I remember this spot very vividly from that trip. So, last few years I've been coming back for a trip almost uh, almost yearly for the last few years. So, this is another one. <coughs> so, uh, this is a. dig, a grizzly bear dig. I'm not sure, maybe he's going for ground squirrels or maybe those roots in there. But you can see like these giant rocks just pulled right out of the ground. And then if you look down here, it's quite big. He dug up this whole hillside here. You can see all the topsoil tossed down. That big rock there. toss aside like it was nothing. I wouldn't be able to budge that thing out of the dirt with a crowbar. I just ripped it out of the soil like it was nothing. It's, uh, it's quite a big dig. It's pretty impressive. Their country. Alright, just crested Cataract Pass. Heading back down the Brazo. It's the lakes I camped first night. Got a little rainstorm going up and over. It's still raining a bit, so I'm just gonna start keeping it. I just took a little different way through the boulder field there along the river. It's pretty awesome. Look at that. Paradise. Headed that way and then home. All right, out of here. Cool. They just trotted right past me. Cross fox. Awesome.